morning here, everybody. Uh, can you hear me all right? I can talk this loud for 15 minutes. Okay, so we don't have a lot of time. I'll try to keep my answers short. Um, do you guys have any questions? Yes, sir. What is Greg Latique doing now? Greg Latique still has his blog. Um, he's very active in the Prince William County Tea Party. Of course. <laughs> yes. Do you find that the decline of, of local uh, experience news deaths um, in communities feeds into the fact that they don't really know who the players are and what their background is, and it feeds into this kind of hate rhetoric? I've never known a day when I could count on the news media to research the facts before reporting. Um, I've only really been politically aware since the Bush administration began, and we know what happened there. Um, so it's getting worse. In some ways, it's getting worse because it's getting better. What's getting better is the democratization of media. The internet allows people to seek out information uh, and not depend on these one or two, three sources. Um, but that means that the NBC and the CBS and the Fox doesn't have the revenue stream. Is this better? Yeah. They don't have the, the, the revenue stream they can count on, so then they can't afford to hire reporters to go out into the field and find out what's happening. So instead, they just get people to come on for free, a lot of them are lobbyists, and argue with each other. And they present that to us as news entertainment. And unfortunately, that's the only way people are becoming informed. And increasingly, um, as uh, I was just enlightened by a 12-year-old boy, uh, the, what happens is people seek out news that reflects what they already believe. And that they're not looking for information, they're looking for ammunition. So it's, it's just increasingly polarized our, um, our country, and dogmatic ideologies um, are, you know, they find fertile ground in the soft tissue of brains of people who have been made to be afraid or made to be uh, hateful toward people who disagree. Yes. When are you going to take what you learned in Manassas and bring it to Greater Phoenix and help us here? <laughs> well, honestly, that's why I entered this festival. Um, and is there anybody here who's a member of the coffee party already? Okay. Hi. Hello. Hello. There's a sign even. Um, the, the coffee party is in many ways the sequel to 9500 Liberty. And like 9500 Liberty, it's begun on the internet. And like 9500 Liberty, it's a response to polarizing, very extreme tactics that organize around emotions like fear and anger. And what I found in my county is that you know, when you have a community making choices in a climate of fear, you end up making some pretty bad choices. And I think that there are interests that want to see our country exist in a climate of fear. And I think that that's because those special interests are in they're, they want us to make bad choices. They want us to make choices that benefit corporations and lobbyists and fringe groups and hurt the rest of America. From what I understand, that's been going on a little bit in Arizona. And the way to respond is to actually not find the polar opposite extreme and throw the same kind of bricks and hyperbolic statements over at the other side, but to appeal to the center. and. As you see in this film, many of the heroes are Republicans. That perception that Republicans are anti-immigrant and um, organize around hatred as just a you know reflex action, that's not true. That They wouldn't have voted for John McCain in the primary in 2008 if the only thing Republicans wanted was culture war. So I think if you have a bipartisan coalition, like we did in Prince William County, that uh, includes the business community, that includes the religious community, um, stay-at-home moms. Ordinary Americans feel emboldened, encouraged, feel good about participating in the democratic process. We can actually fortify ourselves against those fringe groups, against those special interests and lobbyists. So Coffee Party, nine weeks ago, did not exist. But the same Annabelle Park that you just saw in this movie posted something to Facebook that said, I really have a real problem with this 18-month marathon movie that 
corporate media has been showing us since the 2008 election, as if this tremendously wide and diverse electorate no longer exists, and the only people who are worth covering in the news are very, very extreme, angry, and mostly misinformed people. That sort of facelift that has been put on the face of America has been going through, a, I think, a pretty serious tissue rejection. And that um, tissue rejection uh, was, I think it manifested itself when Annabelle posted something on Facebook, piercing a hole through that false veneer, and 200,000 people rushed through in a matter of weeks. Today, when she posts something on her Facebook fan page, it reaches a million people. Uh, ten days ago, or two weeks ago, more than 450 coffee party meetings took place around the United States. And this Saturday, we hope to have more than 500. Maybe we can get up to, let's try 750. But I know there are going to be many here in the Phoenix area. And raise your hands again if you're already with Coffee Party. Talk to those people um, at, on your way out um, if you want to get involved. Because what we're you know, basically about is restoring civility and restoring the ability for people to come together in a fact-based, calm, composed way to collaborate on solutions to the problems that we face. Unfortunately, we're going to come to the movie. OK. Yes, sir. Towards the end of the movie, the Hispanics had given up. Um, yes. And how was it today with them, and did they come back after the election? Have, this, have the Hispanics regained trust and hope in the process and in the police force? Our movie is helping with that. There's a Spanish subtitled version that we've shown a number of times at Hispanic churches. And one interesting story that Annabelle told me was that after a screening, a woman came up and she said, you know, we left the county in fear, but we still come back every Sunday for church. And now that I've seen this movie and I realize that the police are not the enemy, that the police were actually trying to do a good job and trying to keep everyone safe, not just certain people, maybe we'll move back so we don't have to travel so far for church. <laughs> um, as far as the political process, yeah, I think that they trusted the political process enough to vote in 2008. Um, that in 2009, we had an election in Virginia, and the turnout was very low. In fact, I didn't even vote. And I, I, that was one of the things that made me really think about why we need a coffee party. Because if someone like me, who's you know, pretty much politically astute, didn't bother to vote in 2009, there must have been something wrong. Because in 2008, a record number of people voted for John McCain. Like, more people voted for John McCain than had ever voted for any presidential candidate. And the same was true of Barack Obama. Everybody felt good about doing that. There was a lot of civic pride in casting those ballots on, a, on either side. Something happened in 2009 that made us turn away from the political process, that caused us to lose faith in the democratic process, even me. And it was essentially this hyper-magnification of the most extreme most severely misinformed people in America to create the illusion that we are um, at war with ourselves. If you go to coffeepartyusa.com, there's a thing called the sphere, where you actually can take a poll basically on how you feel about political issues. And it shows that there's actually a lot of basis for consensus between every different group in America. This, it's really, it's an illusion is created for the media, or by the media, to sell advertising, to make politics look like professional wrestling, <laughs> right? But what happens is, is that people watch that, but as they do, they say, you know, that's entertaining, but I don't think I want to participate in something like that, because I don't look very good in tights, <laughs> right? And so now we have uh, decreased uh, participation, and as a result, it's easier for lobbyists and special interest groups and fringe groups to game the system. That's, I think that's what happened in Virginia in 2009. I didn't realize that it was a fringe group taking over the governor's mansion because I, I trusted the campaign that the man run, ran, and I, um, I wanted to give him a chance. But uh, just the 